Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. It's Monday morning and I am here bidding on cars once again. One that I'm interested in, don't ask me why particularly I'm interested in this, I just think it would be a really good seller. You don't see a huge amount of them. We had one not that long ago and it sold relatively quickly and I think they're just quite a cool, funky little thing. It is this 2011 Renault Wind. It's a 1.2, so it's a fairly reliable engine. It's a roadster, it's got the automatic roof. It's quite cool how it opens actually. It just kind of like folds over. It just looks really good value. It's got a cap clean of 1,475 quid. It's on 62,000 miles, just under. It's only got the one key, so it's seven owners. It is that type of car, a little convertible. People want something for the summer and then get bored of it. So it's got MT until the end of January next year. So not a huge amount, a couple of months, but it's not the end of the world. It's got four services, two being main dealer. Last service on 56,000, so not long ago at all, but it was in 2019. So four years ago, so that definitely wants doing. Now, if we look at the BCA essential check, it does have an amber warning light, which means requires some attention for oilant, for oilant? For oil slash coolant contamination. I guess the product of that might be oilant. Again, take that of a pinch of salt. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's got a head gasket going. They might have just taken the oil cap off and it's got a bit of condensation under there and they've decided they're going to mark that down. But it is a bit of a gamble. And this is the only type of gambling I like to do. So I am tempted. One thing I want to do before it goes through, it's only five lots away. Check this into our auto trader portal. November Alpha 11 Fox Rock Hotel Oscar. The mileage was 61,638. Because while it tells us BCA, the cap price. It says cap retail is 3,000 with a cap clean of 1,475. Auto Trader's telling us that actually it's got a retail of 3,350. This, at this sort of value, is the sort of car where I want to get about a grand at least. No car really I want to sell, unless it's a part exchange or a real little cheap thing that's come in for whatever reason with less than a grand, because by the time you take 17.5% out of it, for your VAT, then you've got to take out your servicing costs and whatever, you're gonna be left with like about 400 quid and you know, really not worth it. So 3,350, let's say I want a thousand pounds plus 250 quid's worth of reconditioning. We can bid up to about 2,100 pounds. That includes the fees, which are gonna be about three or 400 quid. So I guess realistically, let's think about it, 1,700 quid should be my maximum bid on this. It's one of those cars. Either other people are going to think, yeah, oh, that's quite funky, that's quite cool, I'll have a go on it. Will the warnings put them off? I don't know. 600 quid. Seven. 700 quid. We're in at 750. We're back in at 850. Oh, it's picking up now. All right, 1,000. sold for a thousand pounds so assuming i mean frankly at the end of the day even if it has got some oil contamination even if we do a head gasket we're still quizzing on that and take a bit of work but got high turnover of stuff so that can go in the background and get done i'm fairly happy with that to be honest that where was that i can't remember if that was at bristol or bridgewater that's at bridgewater so it's just up the road as well so it's going to cost us nothing to pick that up it's going to need an mt it's going to need a service and it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. We'll get the guys to film collecting it, and then probably the best thing we can do is meet you in the workshop when the mechanics are gonna look it over and see if I've bought an absolute lemon. It's 50-50 at this stage. I'll see you then.
Condensation in it. It's these remotes. I always get it on remotes. movement track rod end put the knotties on the back when he was driving it is that a new caliper Broken. Both rear coil springs are broken. <laughs> and there's the coil spring. And that one. Yeah. Then you need to. Joe likes getting parts for cars, doesn't he? Right, shall we give Joe the good news? Found a few things. That conversation was just a remote oil filler. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, head gasket's okay. Yeah. Oh! So that one fell out. Usually they're in the car, yeah? Yeah. So, missing top half of the spring. This one, top half of the box seat. Oh, yeah. So, pair of rear coils, that one fell out. <laughs> You've gained some scrap. This, I think this is what you're on about. So it is the wheel bearing then, is it? No, the track then's gone. Ah, oh, okay. And top mount on this side. Yeah, okay. But it's had new, um, it's had a replacement caliper there. Yeah. And it's had new, uh, new discs and pads on the rear. So this is basically a Renault Twingo, so the part should be Quite cheap, hopefully. Yeah, so Track rod end's not going to be expensive. Top mount. Yeah, it's just a top mount. I mean, all the pads and that are okay. There's some pads and MOT work, or I don't know, it's a bit odd, isn't it? Because you've got all that. I think it's new... got a reason all that MOT. Well, yeah, because it? it's got all new brakes on the rear. It's got a new one there with new pads on the front. But coil springs are falling out of it. So a couple of coil springs, a track rod end. <laughs> track rod end and a top strap mount. Bargain. So, yeah. The good news is they put on there about the oil and coolant contamination just because it's got some condensation under the cap. Yeah, I whatever. would say that's because they used the big the tube. When we were Volkswagen, when I was with Volkswagen, we had on was it the SR16 and two litre engines. They had the remote tube like that. Yeah. And you take them off every time we service them and then we just put a cream cheese. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, such a high point. Yeah, yeah, condensation, yeah, and yeah. it just mixes with your... I guess they've got to mark it down. So we got it for about 600 quid less than we should have done. So we got yeah, a few quid left. I reckon it should be alright. The oil's clean. So. We drove fine. Yeah. Other than, you know, yeah. I felt like the wheel was going to fall off. Yeah, so... Minor stuff. We have a little bit of a refurb. Yeah, they're not very... Maybe go back to clean. silver would look 
a bit better. The silver wheels would look better than the black, the black leather seats. We can take them down to PCL for 200 quid, we can get the whole set done. Yeah. Really freshen the old girl up. Okay. Lovely. Mm -hmm. I'll leave it in your capable hands then. Cool. Right, so here we are. I'd love to say it's a few days later. I'd love to say it was a few weeks later, but unfortunately it's actually been three months since I first picked up this car. That was the 19th of December and it's now the 22nd of March. Uh, it's got put on the back burner. We have been very busy. In fact, as a lot of you who watch the channel regularly know, the first few months of the year have just been non-stop kind of warranty problems, getting cars, you know, buying cars with problems, getting them sorted. So this kind of put on the back burner, but it's, it's done now. It's just had its MOT today. It's had all its bits and pieces done. Um, yeah, and it's finally ready to be up for sale properly. Before we go out, what I haven't done yet, seeing as I've put my vehicle score cap on because we are going out in a convertible and it's actually not, well, the sun's out, but it's not the warmest of days. I'm going to do myself a little vehicle score on this car because I don't think we did one of these before. So let's put our reg in November Alpha 11 Foxtrot Hotel Oscar. It's going to give us a score from 1 to 999 based on its MIT history, age, mileage, and many other factors. And ours is 664. Not bad. Let's find out why it thinks that. Uh, looking good. Last MIT had no comments. Recent MIT pass rates high. Mileage is between 30 and 80,000. Average yearly mileage is perfect. Bad bits, no current MOT. That's a lie. I'm sure it's not lying. It just hasn't caught up with the DVLA database because it was MOT'd today. So over 10 comments on recent MOTs, vehicles over 10 years old. Um, and it was only done on a retest today, actually. So our score's probably even higher than that once the MOT goes through. Um, get loads of information on here, of course. Vehicle details, you know, it's a 1.1, 1 1.2, they call it. Petrol, we've got our mileage tracker. We can look at vehicle performance, which I imagine must be absolutely blistering on this. Let's tap to reveal. 99 brake horsepower. It's an insurance group 14E, top speed of 118 miles an hour. You'd be a braver person than I would to take this at 118 miles an hour. Not to 60 in 10.5 seconds. And it costs 200 pounds a year to tax. There's absolutely loads of stuff on here on vehicle score. We frankly haven't got time to go through all of it the AI mechanic, the future price indicators, the MOT histories, things to look out for when you buy a car. But most importantly are the three different types of checks that you can do with vehicle score. You've got the salvage report for £2.97, the ultimate report for £8.97, and then you have the ultimate report plus, which is everything that the ultimate report does, but you've also got £10,000 worth of data guarantee from Experian. So should something come up on that car that wasn't in the report, you would be covered for up to £10,000. And don't forget, if you use my code SHIFTINGMETAL20, you will get 20% off. It makes it just £9.58. An absolute bargain. Something you can't afford to not do, really, when you're thinking about handing over your hard-earned cash to buy a car. Right, let's head out for a little spin. I'll talk you through some of the story of what's happened with this car. And then I have got all the prices set out. So we'll pull over somewhere and I'll talk you through everything we've spent on this car, whether there's any profit left in it or not and whether I think it was a good buy or not. So the wind in general, I actually quite like it. It is basically a Renault Twingo with a different body and a, you know, a power folding roof. At least that's my opinion. I don't, I'm not saying it's necessarily got the same underpinnings, but I think it has. I think in fact, to get the rear springs that we need on this, we had to cross reference the part numbers and get Twingo springs because it was a nightmare trying to find ones for this model off of this registration. It just kept sending us springs that were completely wrong. So if you are looking to get one of these, that's one of the things you have to consider is you're going to probably do a bit of research in order to get the right parts for it, and at least the parts at a non-extortionate price. Driving this car is essentially like driving a motorized roller skate. It is pretty firm, bumpy. I mean, typically French, it's a firm, bumpy ride, but you've got incredibly cushioned seats. So you're not uncomfortable. You're just getting bounced around and if you have problems of seasickness, it's probably not the car for you. We have got some nice features though, like cruise control. We've got our CD radio. We've got air conditioning in here, should you want it as well. And thanks to having the track rod end done, the wheel isn't flapping about all over the place. When I first picked this up from BCA, I was driving it back and I think I put the brakes on and it just veered me violently almost off the road because of that broken track rod end. 
Uh, obviously the guys have had it through the workshop now, checked it over and it's just gone through its MIT. So all that sort of stuff is sorted. One thing we haven't done that I was planning on doing, just because it's been kind of caught up in everything else, and I'm sure we still will end up doing, is refurbishing the wheels. I wanted to put them to silver. I've since figured out that these would have had a diamond cut face. They're black with a diamond cut face, so that you know you have the black and the kind of silvery chrome look on the front. That would cost quite a bit to do, but I think if we were to just send these off to be powder coated in silver, it would freshen the car up and make it look 10 times better. So we will probably do that, but we'll get it advertised as is, um, see if we can't get some interest in it. We can always, either way, they're either gonna be powder coated to black or silver, but I think we'll give it a week um, as they are, see if we get interest. If someone turns up, like, oh, the, you know, we'll pre-warm them. The wheels are not in good condition. We're gonna get those refurbished. Um, but yeah, I think, I think we're gonna have to do those. I think it would have added a lot but I just, I just, we haven't got around to it. It's just past his MOT today and I thought I'd better get that video out. Unfortunately, I'm not as organized as Matt from Hypex Autos. My life isn't in order. It's a complete mess. So I thought I'd just seize this opportunity to finish this video while I could. Um, and maybe if, if you don't follow me already on Instagram, follow me there, shifting underscore metal. And if and when we get those wheels done, when probably, unless someone turns up and says they love the wheels looking like you know they've been chewed on by a bull mastiff then we'll leave them but otherwise i'll put a picture on there when they're done showing you how nice this car is looking then and whether the future buyer decided to go for silver or black let's stop here and get the roof down before we pull up and talk about figures so you've got to turn this lever here that way then you press the power fold roof it's quite a cool system on this it just flips like it's doing a backflip straight over how much of that you would have seen, I don't know. And that's it. It's actually pretty quick. That is a fairly impressive system. You can't do it while you're moving, I don't think. I think you need to have the handbrake on. You'll probably be able to hear the little 1.2 turbo engine a bit better now. It sounds a bit like an electric drill, but it's quite sprightly. It makes for quite good fun driving. The car actually feels pretty rigid considering it's convertible. You don't notice a lot of flex, but maybe that's because it's you know, half the size of one of my shoes. So there's not that much length to be flexing. So, the car cost us, including fees from the auction, £1,247.30. That was a £1,000 bid, and then £247.30 of fees on top. I actually put this onto my stocking loan, which if you're not aware of what a stocking loan is, it's something that car dealerships can use. So basically it's like financing your forecourt. Uh, I can buy a car from an auction house or anywhere in fact, but this one's actually with BCA. They came to me and said, would you like to have some stocking with us? And I said, sure. And this was, I think the first car I put on there. So I wouldn't normally put a car of this sort of value on there, but I thought it'd be interesting. And hopefully it'd be interesting for the sake of this video as well. Uh, Basically, you just say, put it on there and they will charge you fees for having it on there. You don't have to put any money up front. Some of them you have to put some money up front, etc., etc. But with this one, I didn't have to. And to be honest, I forgot it was on there until I was trying to find the invoice for it and figured out that it was on this stocking system. So for three months to have this car of £1,247.30 on my stocking facility, it ran about 90 days, maybe more, 92 days, has cost me £47. I wonder how many of you think that's a lot of money and a lot of you will think that's not a lot of money. I suppose if that was a £10,000 car, it would have been £470, wouldn't it, for three months? But very rarely are we keeping a car in stock for three months. You want to keep it there for uh, a month at most. Ideally, sometimes it's going to take longer, but let's say you had a car for a month then and it would cost you 150 quid. 150 quid is not so bad, is it, if you're making a couple of thousand pounds and it helps you have more stock. But yeah, I thought I'd give it an insight into stocking facilities. Like I say, I forgot it was on there, really. So £47 extra we've got to add on for that three months of having it on that stocking facility. Then we did a full service. I did have all this paperwork on my desk probably a month or two ago, and I just filed it all away because I just thought this thing was never going to end. But let's say all of the service bits, the filters and oil at our kind of trade rate would cost us about 30 quid. Uh, the top mount was about 25 quid. The springs we got, uh, we needed to get a pair, obviously, they were £22 each, so that's £44. 
The track rod end was about £15. We had to put a battery in this as well because the battery turns out wasn't in great shape. That cost us £43 for whatever it was, an 063 maybe. We had to pay £55 for the MOT as again those of you who follow the channel regularly know that we're now paying kind of quite strong rates from at most our, our most regular MOT place for an MOT which is a nuisance we need to try and sort that out but that's cost us 55 quid. And then labour, let's say it was about four hours of labour. I mean, the springs pretty much fly in the back, track rod end, um, and the top mount, and a service. Let's say it's four hours. Let's say it costs me about 100 quid, you know, net of all the extra national insurance and all that sort of stuff. So that gives us a grand total of £1,606.30, which actually isn't all that bad. When we first looked at this and I put it into Auto Trader, it said that the kind of retail price was £3,495. But actually, in the three months that it's been hanging around, that's dropped. It's now saying it's £3,000. But we've currently still got it priced at 3495 and it's saying it's a fair price. I think if we put it down to 3250 or 32, what should I say, 3249, I think, we'll try it there because that'll leave us a couple hundred quid scope to get the wheels sorted. Um, and I think, you know, we should drum up some interest, uh, which if we did sell it for £3,249, it would gross us a profit of £1,642.70. That is an absolute result because that's 102% return on investment. Now, that all sounds great. But if you're a dealership who runs to very kind of strict overage stock limits, um, some people will set their limit at 60 days. If a car is still with you at 60 days, they will get rid of it at whatever cost because they've decided it's not going to cost, you know, it's not going to make us any money, but it's costing us money to be here. A lot of dealerships will work out what it costs them to have their business open, basically. And I think for us, it's about £20 uh, a day per car, per car parking space that we've got available to us and how much my overheads are. You split that down, uh, let's say over 50 cars, and it's £20 per day. So you get to a point where you've got a break-even point. I don't know how many days it would have been a break-even point in this. Maybe, let's say, a couple of weeks ago. Because if you were to work out, let's say, 90 days, those three months it's been in stock, at £20 each, we'd actually be looking at £157.30 loss. So if all of our cars were sticking around for this long on the forecourt, we'd be losing money hand over fist, basically. On paper, you're making double your money back. But if it's sitting around forever and you're paying for a business and somewhere to park it, then you're not, are you? It all depends on how you do your calculations, I guess, for your uh, financial bookkeeping type of thing. I don't tend to run on those sorts of things. I like to just know that if we're turning over enough, if we're selling enough cars with enough margin in, then I know we're making profit. But some people, you know, are very analytical about it and would say that this car is now a net loss because it's been around for so long. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think that's... Uh, that's the right way of thinking about it or is it a case of how many you sell regardless of how long it takes there's profit in it i am going to choose to say that we are making well over the thousand pound profit that i first said that i wanted even once we've done the wheels and i'm quite happy with that i certainly don't want lots of cars hanging around for three months while we sort them out but you know it doesn't really matter as long as we were busy in the meantime which trust me We've been very busy, which is why... Oh, we've got the roof latch. Good job it told me. We've been very busy with all sorts of things, not just selling cars, but fixing them as well. So, you know, the odd one that sticks around for a little while is not too bad. Trust me, I've got ones that have been around for a lot longer. We are trying to work through them now. Anyway, that is it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new here and you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I would really appreciate it if you did. A lot of you haven't. I don't know what the statistics are. I know a lot of people say in these videos, don't they? 75% of you have not. I don't know how many people haven't, but yeah, I'd, I'd love to have more on board. So please join the Shifting Metal family. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, shifting underscore metal. In fact, I'm on TikTok now as well. I'm getting quite a lot of TikToks out. That is shifting.metal. You can find out all of my merchandise on my website, shiftingmetal.co.uk. If you want to sell your car, Go to my car buying website, carsboughtformore.com. I think that's everything I've got to tell you this time. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.